Dude, this snare drum is older than my freaking grandpa. Welcome back, my friends, to another installment of Tim Baltus's Geriatric Percussion Items Unlimited. Today we're looking at two, count them, one and two Ludwig snare drums that are almost 100 years old. 90-ish year old snare drums, which to me is just, it's crazy. These are from the heyday of uh, sort of the invention of the modern drum set. So you're gonna see some things that you recognize visually, some things that you don't. But overall, what you're gonna find here is both of these drums, despite being almost a century old, still hold up tonally in a modern musical context. Both of these are from Ludwig. This one here, this is a really cool drum. So this is a Ludwig Super. Now you're probably wondering what's so super or duper about this drum. It's the big snare mechanism on this thing. The Ludwig Super is sort of the precursor to the super sensitive snare drum that you see a lot from the 60s and 70s. It's got this big mechanism with these long wires and it looks super complicated. Well, because it, it definitely feels super complicated. To me, it feels over-engineered. Not something I would ever want to keep in my own collection because there's, there's too many parts going on. What is really cool about this drum that I love are these early hoops. You'll see that Ludwig here used these really thin sort of die cast or sort of stick chopper style hoops. Everything is nickel over brass. The thing I love about nickel is over time, instead, chrome always stays that sort of silver color, but over time, nickel, oh, it gets that just beautiful goldish hue to it. And this retains that. The Ludwig Super, this came out, I believe, what do we got here? I got my notes on this one, folks. This came out in 1929. The badge on here, they call sort of like a silver anniversary badge. That's a 30s badge. So this drum and the other one are going to be from the 30s. We'll talk more about the other one later. This parallel sort of snare mechanism, I guess the big thing is you could swap snare wires on it. So if you're an orchestral player or whatever, or whatever, you can change. They had gut wires, uh, which I always heard was made from uh, the guts of a cat probably a cow at that point in the 30s. I hope they ain't using cat gutties. And then we got coiled wire, which would be your standard sort of snare wire. And then silk and steel was the other type that they offered. I, again, if you're an orchestral player, maybe there's some use to these different things, but in a modern musical context, really, you're just gonna have some steel or brass wires, coiled wire does the job. They said that these were like super adjustable and whatever, and that's sort of the benefit to these things, but there's just so much to figure out and so much to take care of that, again, not something I want to keep around all the time, but gosh, is it a beautiful drum? And we'll uh, give it a listen right now. Now, that drum sounds really good, the, the anniversary model, the Super, but this is the one I'm really excited about, and, and it's way cheaper. This anniversary model here uh, in the snare stand is gonna be like 1,200, 1,500 bucks in the last couple examples that I saw of them sell. It might be more now, but I love this other model in my hands right here. This is the Ludwig and Ludwig Pioneer model. So many Ludwigs working at the factory, they had to put the name and the brand twice in the 30s, folks. What's really cool about this, now this is the same layout technically as the other shell. You got a 14 by five, both 14 by five, both eight lugs, and they're both nickel over brass. The difference is the anniversary model is probably 30, 40% heavier than this one. So this, you could think of this as kind of like the Acrolyte of its day. It's a thinner sort of student level snare, but since it's 90 years old, this thing was built like a tank. It's built to last and it's brass still, so it sounds killer. People sleep on these snares. A few years ago, you used to be able to get them for like 300, 350 bucks. Not sure what they're going for now, but I'll bet there's still a bargain as compared to a lot of the other drums that you're gonna find from this era. So uh, let's give this thing a listen now too.
I mean, like, what a drum. This thing is nearing 100 years old and uh, light as a feather, still affordable almost a century later for most drummers, much more affordable than other expensive drums of the day. You know, the, the Black Beauties that you would see, some of these anniversary models, Slingerland Radio Kings, they're all more expensive than this little drum here. And uh, still here, 100 years later, this thing, both of them still sing. And I'll bet they sound good in a, a, a musical context too. So I'm gonna play along with some sort of uh, music tracks. And I, I think you're gonna really see that I got a modern kit here that's less than a couple years old. And then two snare drums that are almost a hundred years old and they still all mesh just fine. Just for context here, we do have modern wires on the Pioneer. So there's just like 12 strand wires on the bottom, Chinese wires, nothing fancy. You have a vintage uh, Ambassador snare side on the Pioneer and a vintage, not the new, not the new like vintage Ambassador, but truly vintage 60s or 70s heads top and bottom, an Ambassador uh, coated on the top of this little Pioneer drum here. And you got the same thing going on on this anniversary model. You have really old Remo heads top and bottom. So I think this is gonna sound really cool with the music. So let's check it out. chefs in the world say the proof is in the pudding and that tapioca is pretty tasty right now 90 year old almost 100 year old drums both of them sound great here in uh, the 21st century and i hope they sound good in the 22nd too i'll bet they will people are always going to find a use for these sounds as long as these drums are serviceable people are gonna keep using them. And I think that's a reason to try to pick one of these up because what's affordable now, I, I would guess, if people are gonna keep using acoustic drums in the future, then these things are only gonna continue to go up in value. So it could be a decent little investment. And, and if nothing else, it's something you can enjoy now. I was fortunate enough to have dinner with uh, Todd Zuckerman once, drummer for Sticks. Something he always preaches is that, you know, you really got like one shot at this whole life thing. So why not get the things that bring you joy? You know, that's why this guy has all these vintage sonar drums, all these old pearl drums, even giant premiere kits from the past. He's got his whole basements filled with drums. Now, I'm not the kind of person that wants to have that many drums around, but I'll tell you what, I am going to have instruments around that I really enjoy playing. And whether that's a hundred year old drum like these old Ludwig and Ludwigs or brand new drums like these Franklin drums here, I'm gonna make sure that I have them because these are the things that bring me joy in life. Just some philosophical food for thought there. Thanks for joining me on the video. You know, besides the drums you see here, you know, obviously you're gonna see that I got the Franklin kit today. Evan's heads, top and bottom on the kit. And the symbols here, Turkish Symbols USA, 15 inch Millennium hats, 20 inch uh, Metacrash, 22 inch Millennium ride, and a 24 inch prototype, kind of special dry, super thin ride there. Turkish Symbols USA, that's the company that borrowed us these couple Ludwig and Ludwigs to check out today. So please give them a shout, tell them thank you for letting us hit their drums. And I hope you dig the symbols too, because I really dig these, they sound great. Thanks again for joining me. Stop by next time. And if you could, give me a like, give me a subscribe, shoot me a comment and tell me what's your favorite flavor of fruit.
I like real watermelon. I need a, a good watermelon. I, I have tried uh, to learn how to pick a really good watermelon, and I still screw up several times over the course of the year, which does not make me feel good. But I've had real good luck with the little mini watermelons at the Trader Joe's recently. So if you're looking for a fine melon, Trader Joe's, my friends. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.